Hey guys, it's Mr. Schmidt here, and in this video, we're going to actually draw the production possibilities curve and use it to model the idea of efficiency. So what I want to do here is draw the graph with you from scratch so you can see how we build it out and then what we can do with it. So any graph in this, in this course is going to just use the positive axes of the coordinate plane because, again, you can't have negative dollars or negative goods, so we don't need the other part of it. Now remember, the PPC shows the combinations of two goods, so the labels on these axes for the PPC is going to be the two goods. So we're going to say we have two types of cookies here. So we'll say these, this uh, axis is going to be sugar cookies, and the other axis is going to be my personal favorite, chocolate chip. And so we're going to say that we have enough resources to make, remember those resources are fixed, to make up to five batches of cookies in total. And we can decide how many of those are going to be chocolate chip or sugar cookies. Well, if we were to plot out all of the uh, combinations, you know, what we would get here is a linear production possibilities curve, or in this case, line. So our vertice, at our intersection point at the top here would be five because that's the most chocolate chip we can make. And down here for sugar cookie, also five, that's the most we can make. And then we would have um, various combinations along the side here. Um, so we can go ahead and label this one, two, three, four, and this one, two, three, four. And again, that's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be just illustrative. Uh, for our purposes. So this is a production possibilities curve. It shows all the combinations of two goods, in this case chocolate chip and sugar cookies, that can be produced with a fixed amount of resources. Now, let's talk about uh, what we could say of a point that is on the PPC. So let's pick uh, this point here at three chocolate chip and two sugar cookies, and we'll call that point A. So what could we say about point A? Well, we could say that point A is efficient. So what does it mean to be efficient on the PPC? Well, that means we are using all resources, right? Because remember, the most batches I can make in total is five. And at combination A, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm making three chocolate chip plus two sugar cookie, so I would make five batches in total. So any point on the PPC is considered efficient. All right, now let's look at a point inside the PPC. What can we say about that? So let's pick, uh, let's pick this point right here at 2, 2. So we'll say that this point is called point B. So what can we say about point B on the PPC? Well, I'm sure you won't be surprised by this. We can say that point B is inefficient. So what do we mean by inefficient? Well, it's the opposite of efficient. We are not using all resources. Okay, and you can see that here because we're only making two batches of chocolate chip plus two sugar cookie, so that's five or so that's four batches when we could be making five batches, right? We can make one more batch of chocolate chip or one more batch of sugar cookies without giving up any of the other type of cookie. So this is inefficient. Now, why might this economy be inefficient and only be producing? four batches of cookies. Well, there's two reasons we can think of here. The first one is what we would call unemployment. So unemployment means not using resources, right? Resources that are sitting around not being used. So maybe we um, forgot that we can make a fifth batch of cookie, or maybe we have some workers who are going to make that fifth batch, but they quit their job, and so we don't have those resources to use, or they're in the hospital, 
heaven forbid. So that's what we mean by unemployment. You hear the term unemployment and you think of it someone not working, which could be the case here, right? But it can mean any resource that is not being used, not just labor. The other reasons uh, we could be inefficient here is what we would call underemployment, which means we are not using a resource to its fullest. So maybe um, we have a worker who doesn't know how to make a batch of cookies, and so he's not as efficient as he could be. Or maybe we have a machine that does, that's pretty slow, and so we're not able to make the full five batches. That's the idea of underemployment. A resource is not being used the fullest. So we can be inefficient because a resource either isn't being used, unemployment, or is not being used to the fullest, underemployment. Finally, what can we say about a point that is outside the PPC? So let's do this point right here at four sugar cookies and two chocolate chip, and we'll call that point C. So what could we say about point C? Well, for point C, we could say this is unattainable, right? Because remember, the most batches we could make is five. But here we're making six, two chocolate chip plus four sugar cookies. So in other words, I do not have not enough resources to make this combination. So any point that is outside the PPC is going to be unattainable. And I forgot to mention that any point that is uh, that's an arrow, <laughs> inside the PPC is going to be inefficient. So this is important to understand here. No matter how the PPC is shaped, a point on the PPC is efficient, inside is inefficient, and outside is unattainable. We don't have enough resources to produce that combination. So that's all for this video on using a PPC to show efficiency. Until next time, have a great day.